Cardiff in, in Wales in the UK and allegedly they were almost uh, colliding with a UFO when a shopper and this has become rather big in the media now but anyway my question here I guess is that is it only when this become large like in the mainstream that is it is of this importance or does it also apply to when it's not so uh, such a big event so to speak? Yeah, it also applies when it's not such a big event. And, and this falls back into the temporal sort of control that these messengers have. Yeah. Because they realize that sometimes what they're doing is just a catalyst for a greater event in the future. But do they know actually that what they've actually, uh, say, uh, manifested in the ground, um, well, let's just, for sake of argument, say that there is such thing as a uh, UFO-created crop circle. Right. And that that crop circle is actually uh, a pure thought, and pure information that although we may not understand it in the weeks that we are investigating it after it's all actually occurred, mm-hmm. somebody a year later or two, year late, two, two years later will actually decode it. Or there will be event, an event that correlates to it that will have occurred, and the understanding will suddenly become uh, widespread. However, there's other things that are happening too. Some of these images that you see in crop circles actually do stimulate uh, the human mind in ways that we aren't quite up to speed with. Hmm. In the same way that I was saying uh, that the Timonaka geoglyphs also supposedly were supposed to heighten men's awareness um, at a specific time. They're calibrated to work at a point in time, just like if you set a clock. And, and that's what I mean then by theurgy, because it basically the word just means to, to bend or to, to manipulate in almost architecturally the will of, of God. And in, uh, uh, in, in the pagan religions and in the occult, it's not so much the will of God, but spiritual forces outside of that, uh, out of the, uh, the God of God. Right. And this, in the, uh, uh, the Judeo Christian framework, would be an angelic force. And right. We know they're aligned on two sides of the, for and against the will of God, you know that there is actually then some conflict that's going on, yeah. and that this manifestation that they, they, they place here on earth addresses that conflict. Hmm. And so to get actually a reading on what the heck's going on with it, there, there has to be some sort of handbook. For me, it's the Old Testament, it's the New Testament, right. and I try to parse these things out in their original languages. And you find answers every time. I can think back to uh, you know, first events that, at least we know in, in America, is the most popular. The, the idea that modern ufology was actually created by this event, and that's the Roswell event in 1947. Indeed. Now, this is a theurgic event, and it's really, it's really easy to explain how theurgic it is, because you can take only three data points from it. That is, where it occurred on latitude, where it occurred on longitude, and what year it occurred. And every one of those numbers happens to be a function of not only the geometry on Cydonia Mars, but also focuses on the year 2012. Hmm. It hits also the numbers that we know as universal constants, what SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, has been looking for for decades. These universal constants are exactly what we would uh, assume a intelligence greater than ours, or at least level to ours, would be broadcasting. Yeah. Because they don't depend on any, any language to decipher. Mathematics is universal. Hmm. So what you see with the uh, Roswell crash is that it occurred at 33, roughly 33 degrees in latitude. What's interesting about that is if you could take the, the number pi, which... Uh, mathematicians think is transcendental, which means they think it goes on forever into decimal places. But it's basically 3.14159264. You can go, you can plug that into 33. You multiply pi times 33, yeah. and you get the longitude, which is 103.67. You can draw a little crosshairs, and you can find that's exactly where at least one of these uh, disks that was reported to have crashed in 1947 actually was recovered. Hmm. And then in addition to that, if you take 103.67, which is the longitude, say, of the crash site, yeah. and you multiply that times 19.47, you 
you end up in the date 2018. If you take 103.67 and convert it into uh, what you have, minutes and seconds, in degrees, minutes and seconds when it comes to longitude and latitude and not just a decimal system, mm-hmm. it comes out to 103.40, and that puts you into 2013 when you multiply it times 19.47. Mm-hmm. 19.47 is just a fractal of the year that this occurred. But at the same time, you realize that 33 is a symbol of a third, of a third of something. Yeah. And then decimal, 100%, 33 would represent a third of it. If you're looking at, uh, if you're looking at a, uh, say, a sphere that's divided into three parts, like the Earth, you realize that the three-dimensional object that would do that would be a tetrahedron. Hmm. If you're looking down from a pole and you actually have had a tetrahedron with one of its vertices touching the pole, you'll see it separating the Earth in three perfect segments. Yeah. If you look at so that you're looking at the axis obliquely, so the axis is straight up and down, you can see that the uh, this tetrahedron that's superimposed inside the sphere, which, by the way, there are two polar opposites of the platonic solids. You have the sphere, which is the highest form, and the, the tetrahedron, which is the lowest form. You can't have a, a shape that has less sides. Right. So anyway, the tetrahedron on the sphere superimposed like this. In, 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 in a system like we have on the Earth, where zero is the equator and 90 degrees is where the poles are at, the other vertices of this tetrahedron will touch at 19.47 degrees hmm. on, on the latitude, north right. or south, depending on where you put the vertices in the south or the North Pole. This is something that uh, Richard Hoagland, in his book, Monuments of Mars, covered extensively because he kept finding the signature in the geometry of the Cydonia Monuments itself and even the location of it on Mars. And then this thing turns up in an event far earlier than anything we've discovered in it. The Viking, you know, uh, missions to Mars occurred in 76. Um, but in 47, 1947, we have all the components of tetrahedral geometry encoded in this event. And you can take it another, another step because we're not just looking at, we're not just looking at, say, the, the mathematics and the geometry of this, this whole thing. This fits into... Uh, history and the situation fits into theology that is already intact, that's, that's already available to us. Yeah. Because those numbers show up again and again in uh, the biblical text, in the Apocrypha, um, and outside the Western canon also. Mm. They also show up in, in, in Asian um, works. Uh, you find it in the Popol Vuh, you find it in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, yeah and you find these, you know, listed over and over again. They, they're universal. Yeah. And you have to you have to stand back and look at it. What is it trying to tell us? Indeed. It all fits back into this idea of the cyclical nature of cataclysm, and that there's some force that's getting us ready hmm. for that time, which is incredibly near. Uh, so um, that that's what the theurgy fits into because. When men actually are able to, uh, and this is an interesting thought, that the idea that men as, as theurgists somehow can cause these uh, uh, higher powers, angelic forces, if you will, to manifest themselves on the earth or to intervene or to, to actually maybe work with men on the earth, then men will actually parse out what it is that these previous interventions, the previous manifestations contain the information that they contain, and then again manifest that same information in structures that they built on the earth and in structures that they built at certain times, hmm. structures that they built in certain locations. Just like, like I've been explaining, angelic messages actually uh, uh, come uh, come forth. Come, come forth there. Uh, and, and that is, I mean, that's incredibly fascinating. And what you, what, you know, to kind of you know uh, summarize here a little bit on the first segment as we as we begin to uh, close off here and then begin in the second one we, we can say that w- with the background of which what we talked about it at uh, the, the the site that you discovered in Bolivia T- uh, Tiahuanaco, uh this is a uh, one place then in in you know at the across the globe that we can potentially find evidence for that some 
some beings, so to speak, have been involved in building uh, these structures for potentially ritualistic purposes. And uh, what you also have been mentioning a little bit is that if we look at year, uh, we can look at dates, we can look at places in regards to latitude, longitude, we can look at place names. Uh, these all kind of incorporate into one system that is involved in a communication. And uh, I, I guess a last question before we wind things off here, David, would be, is is this a communication to to educate us in 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 um, you know in a fashion in order to you know help us to get through the upcoming cataclysms or is this an indoctrination that is going on? Do you have a take on that? 